here today because there's a lot of sin in Springfield. There's a lot of wickedness in this town. You know that? Who would hire a couple of evil speaking bands who talk about adultery and drinking and boozing it up as if there's nothing wrong with that. Who would do that except some evil people? We want the evil people out here, you sinners today, to repent and be converted. It's what the Bible says, you know, we're talking about judgment and bad judgment, you know. I had in mind Habakkuk 134 just for this event. Because Habakkuk was lamenting about all the wickedness, all of the sin, all the iniquity and the violence around him. He said, therefore, the law is slack. You know that? That's a problem Springfield has had. The law is slack. It's nothing to laugh about. You see, therefore, judgment Go, doth never go forth when the law is slack, the prophet said. That's a bad, wicked thing. A bad thing. When that law is slack. He said, therefore, the wicked compass around about the righteous. And then he says, Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. When you said, hey, let's go check out Restless Heart, that's a wrong judgment. When you said, hey, let's go check out Shenandoah, that's a wrong judgment. They talked about getting a little buzz on with some booze, you know that? That's what Shenandoah talks about. Whereas his heart talks about adultery. And they say, why does it have to be wrong or right? Won't someone please tell me, he says in that song. What a filthy, reprobate dog that singer is. That is wicked. Talking about. Why does it have to be wrong? Why does adultery have to be wrong? That's what these filthy country bands are going to be singing tonight. I wonder if they'll bypass that song and act like they're more Christian. No, bad judgment's not a laughing matter. Wickedness is not a laughing matter. Yep. Sipping on a little something on Friday night. They're not talking about Mountain Dew. Not that that would be good, but getting the pause is worse. Mm. This man, Jason Brown, he's a fan of John 7 24. Don't judge that bad judgment, judge some righteous judgment. That's what we need more of in Springfield today is some righteous judgment. Amen. You don't have a lot of righteous judgment in Springfield today. That's why they said, hey, you preachers, you're going to go to jail. Oh, yeah. Well, they had to get some righteous judgment. Straighten that out. God says, preach the word. In 2 Timothy 4, 2, 3, 4. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. That's good judgment. 
You got some good judgment tonight? Not if you're gonna watch filthy country music entertainment, you know. That's bad judgment, people. Bad judgment. See, because those country bands, they're what the Bible calls unclean persons. And covetous men who are idolaters. You see, they talk about whoremongering and adultery. You see, Ephesians 5 5 says, For this you know, no whoremonger, no covetous man or unclean person who is an idolater and any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. That's what they have a lot of up on that stage is vain words. For this cause cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The wrath of God is going to come upon all you disobedient heathens if you don't repent get right with God. It's time for all you sinners to get right with God. It's time for you. Hey, praise the Lord. God bless you, man. Tell somebody tonight, okay? Praise God. We had good judgment. I just witnessed good judgment tonight. Hallelujah. There is hope in eternity with Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, this is historical. This is historical. This is an historical moment right now. And the first man, the first person to say anything to this preacher on these sidewalks was, you're doing a good job, man. Keep it up. Praise God. That has not happened yet. As far as the first person, there's, there's a good judgment yes, now and then. There's Hello? been some good judgment now and then, but the first one of the night, praise God. How long have you been preaching out here? Following Jesus. Oh. Wow, well, it's been uh, 12 years <laughs> now. Over 12 years. Now, you know, there are some good judgments there. Praise God. I've seen, I've seen who I believe to be Christians. Praise God. It's it's a good thing that you can find some. But we need a lot more, Springfield. There's a big difference in this bicentennial time than there, were, than there was 200 years ago. You know, 200 years ago, I'll tell you some differences. They didn't sell booze in this town 200 years ago, people. You celebrate the bicentennial? Have you protested against this wicked government body for selling booze, for legalizing booze? They didn't do that 200 years ago, people. Who's going to wise up around here? I'll tell you another thing they didn't do 200 years ago. They didn't even do a few years ago. God have mercy. It's very perverts and call it marriage when there is no marriage. There are filthy, wicked, sodomites, and lesbians in this town, and they've gone to this court house by wicked means of a wicked government and gotten married. You know the law of this land still says those pervert homos have no marriage? You know that? There's no such thing as homo marriage. Wake up. That's still the law of this land. But they roll over for those black robe devils in Washington, D.C. and say, Okay, we'll marry you little fairies. Fairy, Mary. Fairies can get married. What a wicked shame. So they can have a contract with the government. Wicked shame. Contract with the government that says they're married. Are you kidding me? Yeah! 
God says what's married. God says what marriage is. God says what's right and wrong. God says you stop sinning. God says you stop drinking your booze. God says you stop enjoying having pleasure and righteousness. In 2 Thessalonians 2.12 says that they all might be damned who have pleasure, believe not the truth. They love not the truth. They had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's a wicked shame. Can you believe there are homos in this town? There are sodomites in this town. Those wicked, wicked people need to get, by, get past it and repent. Hey, pervert! We all know you perverts, you little wicked devil. Hey, man, Peter's gonna burn with the rest of you, you silly homo. What a bunch of haters. Quit being haters. Hater of God. You hate God's law, you wicked devils. And how, oh, how did I know that they were homos? Okay. The Bible says, when the fool walketh in the way, his wisdom faileth him, and he saith to everyone that yeah, he's a fool. See, sodomites are fools. That's why you can spot them a mile away. You need to get some starch in their limp wrists. If I heard there was a, a homo drive-by shooting, happened recently, they called it a fruit roll-up. Get right with God, people. Get right with God. Time to stop your sinning. Time to get right with God. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. He didn't say, go cut back half, 75%. He didn't even say cut back 99% of your sin. Just keep the booze, the only thing. Nope. He said, no more. Because no drunk will inherit the kingdom of God. No fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, Revilers will have any part, will inherit the kingdom of God. Praise God for His Word. You know, David said, Thou puttest away the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimony. We should love the judgment of God. We should love the righteousness of God. We shouldn't love wicked country acts that say they're Christians and then sing about boozing it up. <laughs> Proverbs 8.13 says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. We need some hatred of evil today. A lot more of it. Those people love evil. Most people love their wicked TV programming. Programming their minds with homosexuality and perversions of all kinds and drunkenness and blasphemy. They love to take God's name in vain. The Bible says blasphemers are going to be destroyed. You need to wake up, rise up, and stop sinning. Stop the sin. Bow down to Him. Give unto the Lord glory and strength, it says. You won't shake your head at the judgment of God after your last heartbeat, buddy. Better get right with God. He's going to shake his head at you. That's exactly what he's going to do. He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. You either work iniquity 
Depart from me, thou cursed, to everlasting fire. See, Jesus said he's going to do something very specific and well planned on the day of judgment. One of those things he's going to do, Matthew 13, 41 through 43 for reference, if you're following along in your Bibles, the Son of Man will send forth his angels, he says. They will gather all things out of his kingdom that have been, and them which do iniquity. And they'll cast them into a furnace of fire. They'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. But then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Anybody have ears to hear that? I do, I do. Hallelujah. Amen. Got at least one. Glory to God. And two righteous men can send 10,000 devils to flight. Praise God. By the power of God. Amen. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And Ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Praise the Lord. Glory be to him. Who's the one who can save sinners? Who's the one who can save sinners? Does anybody know? Does anybody know his name? Is it that pathetic? Nobody knows the name of the one who can save sinners? Who knows his name, people? Who knows the name of the one who can save from sin? They who know knows his name? They know his name when they curse and blaspheme. Oh, unfortunately, a lot of them do. Who knows the name who can save souls today? You don't know his name? Silence. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. He's the Lord of glory. He's the great I am. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, give up the sin today. Young people don't follow the examples of these wicked country singers today. Follow the example of Jesus. The Bible says in Titus 2.11 and following, For the grace of God, which bring us salvation, hath appeared unto all men, teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lust. That's what they're going to have on stage tonight. Ungodliness. Ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly. There is a really powerfully anointed and honest and pure at heart preacher just remembering here, just a few minutes ago, I think, was talking about soberly living, soberly walking, not altering your sobriety. And that's what the grace of God teaches us. No, the grace of God doesn't do what Todd Wright says it does, or TD fakes. No, sir. Joyce Meyer, the liar. Franklin Graham, the scam. Joel, the troll, Osteen. Grace of God doesn't do what they say it does. <clears throat> Billy Goat Graham was Six. wrong. Billy Goat, unfortunately, no way I believe he didn't. Don't believe he had any deathbed tr transformation or conversion. No, I wouldn't believe that. He heart, his heart. Don't go the way of the scam grams. 
that it says that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. See, they'll tell you when you get to heaven, then you're going to be sober and righteous. But in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous for good works. God commands these things you should speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. That's what he says, all authority. And so that's why all those Baker, Charlotte, and Huckster's pulp and pimps are lying to you because they don't rebuke anybody. They don't rebuke with all authority. They flatter you. And he that flattereth with the lips worketh ruin. That's why they're going to hell along with Joel the Troll Osteen. That's why they're going to hell along with Joyce Meyer the Liar. We need real faith. Real faith. Real conversion. Because faith without works is dead. Yet yeah, one may say, the Bible says, show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show you my faith with my works. What does the profit if a man have faith, but he hath not works? Shall faith save him being alone? So John Piper says, what John MacArthur says, faith alone! They love to say that, just like the Bible speaks against. No, your good works do not save you, but your evil works will damn you. You understand? It's not worth works-based salvation, the Bible teaches. It's works-based damnation. Get it straight. Get right with God. Get right with God. Repent today, don't delay, because if you won't, it's hell to pay. Are you rolling in, brother?